Hey, y'all. Huh? Miley uh, Cyrus, huh? I get it. It's I... episode 72 of Alex and Jim normally analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Weird. It's normally, yes. And now we're going off topic, but on purpose. Yes, we're, yeah, that's, that is odd. That is very not what we do. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, and it's weird because we'll probably, it's, so we're intentionally going off topic, which means we'll probably stay on the off topic pretty well. Oh, interesting. That, that'll be the other take. Yeah. So we're swerving back onto the freeway. Right. <laughs> Normally we would t- just take out mailboxes for 45 minutes. <laughs> a quick <laughs> little bit of business I want to share with you. Uh, All right. Give me the business. That we keep getting comments on our YouTube videos. And it's more or less the same guy. And, uh, but not always, it's some other people too. And th- I think this is the same guy who made me feel bad. No, I don't like that guy. But he's, I think he's just a joker because he says nice things. And, and then one, this latest comment, he said, I think it's pretty clear I'm on a very slow binge of your show. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a nice thing to say. Great. I wouldn't recommend a fast binge. No. Oh, God, man. Yeah, you you die, right? You can't be awake yeah. that long. There's a lot of hours to muscle through. And uh, in one of his recent comments, he said he's warming up to my energy. That's the year of slow burn. Dude, with everybody. Nobody <laughs> likes me the first time they meet me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like you. No. And you were probably right not to, because I'm an odd duck. Yeah, you came in hot. Yeah, I came in hot, yep. Hot, doing uh, Forky. Doing Forky. Well, the first time I met Alex, I did a character at a a Bennigan's, and the character was Forky, and he was uh, two forks that chapped. Yeah. But they're all sort of real needy. Forky is needy. Hello. In your space. Yep. Yep. Oh, <laughs> uh, and it was because I immediately liked you. That's all. Now I get that. Yeah. At the time, it was like, oh, this man wants me to hit him. <laughs> Trying to get me to hit him. <laughs> well, listen, two things can be true. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Yeah. So. <laughs> I had this idea that, and I mentioned it in an earlier episode. I had an idea that I wanted to do, and I find it funny to call it a bottle episode. Yeah. Just because you know how expensive our regular episodes are. This is a bottle episode. Great. This is how we can afford the rest of the season. That's right. And I thought, I mentioned earlier that at some point, maybe it would be fun to talk about a different artist. And uh, Alex is good in game. and, And then this time I pulled the trigger and but I was good about it because I've learned to be better about asking, hey, are you okay with this? <laughs> Rather than just forcing it on somebody. So I wanted to talk about Miley Cyrus because of her new tune, which we'll talk about in a minute, which is Flowers. Yeah. Quick question. You like the song? I like the song. Okay. I feel like it's a very uh, average uh, bop. Yeah. I feel like it was super special. So I'm very interested to find out why uh, you wanted to drive off the road for this one. But it seemed to me it sounds a lot like a lot of current pop songs. It definitely does. Her voice is always great. Yeah. Um, thematically very interesting. Um, I My theory is you like the video. <laughs> you know, yes, I do. <laughs> Uh, i will say this miley cyrus in a video much more enjoyable than billy joel in a video (laughs) very fair unless you count uh his terrible acting during like speaking parts that is pretty good that is effing great um i wanted to also i thought of a way to compare miley cyrus to billy joel um 
over the course of her music, not just one song, it occurred to me, and maybe it's just simply true of all singers, but I don't think it is. It's probably really true of country singers, and she definitely has some country flavor. Yeah. And it's for sure true of musical theater Billy Joel, <laughs> which is they play characters. Yes. And I was listening to a lot of Miley Cyrus this week, and Mank was like, man, she does kind of play a lot of characters. She does a song with Joan Jett where she's just a unrepentant vamp. And <laughs> she, and I certainly a lot of lady singers have to play this part, I presume, but they will play the part of the like sultry seductress who can't be trusted. Right. And then there'll be a song later where they're the ones who got the crap beat out of their faithful heart, which is kind of funny. <laughs> just just because it'll be on the same album. And I'm like, well, oh, yeah. and, yeah, those albums are a real roller coaster. Yeah. And that occurred to me. And then the other thing that I find found interesting, and I had to look it up. I noticed multiple songs where she talks about a house burning down. Oh, there are multiple songs where she talks about a house fire as a <laughs> uh, um, as analogy a to a problem. Yeah, as an analogy for a circumstance. Ah. And, and I couldn't remember because I remember Drew Barrymore's house burned down. But I was like, did Miley Cyrus's house ever burn down? Yes, it did. Did it really? Yes, it did. And so huh. I did more research than I would normally do. She, uh, her and Liam's house burned down. Wow. So when she talks about that, it's not just poetic. It's also an observation of a thing that can happen to houses. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deeply personal and yet still kind of a hacky metaphor. <laughs> right. Which isn't that very Billy Joel. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, it actually happened. But, but it still sounds. I, I made it sound hacky. I had this uh, epiphany one time and because a friend of mine was talking about a baseball movie. And he said he hated the baseball movie because it was such a cliche. And I saw the movie. I can't remember what it was. It might have been the, the Jackie Robinson movie. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I remember watching it and going, well, he's right that this is a cliche, but also this is what happened. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> a lot of movies, I feel like, get hamstrung by uh, reality. Where it's like, you know, the old expression about you know oh if you made a movie out of this they wouldn't believe it yeah like uh, yeah you did and we don't yep um yeah they here's what I, my observation is hey if you think this movie's cliche you should check out life right it all yeah. ends the damn same yeah and a lot of stuff happens that is uh corny dude four of my friends right now including myself, so I guess three of my friends, because I count myself, <laughs> uh, but four people. Three of your friends and one of their friends. And one of their friends are going through the exact same circumstance with an old friend, different old friend, uh -huh. and I happen to be confabbing with them and going, why are we all doing this? <laughs> and then it occurred to me, oh, we've hit that milestone. Yeah. Every time one of your dumb friends has a kid, three or four or five of your other dumb friends have a kid. Yeah. And if sure. you don't have a kid, you're one of three or five of your dumb friends who decided not to have kids. <laughs> None of it's original. No. God. The thing, this ongoing striving to be original, and you always just end up in a different hacky storyline. Yep, it's just the same experience. And filtered through you, of course, it's your own original to you. Right. But that makes it worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I like Miley Cyrus, and I keep telling myself that it's because she's very talented, and she is very talented. She is very talented, and she has a very cool voice, for sure. Interesting voice, right? 
Yeah, always. What I, speaking voice is pretty compelling. Yeah. I was explaining to someone what I one of the things I like about her voice is that it's a very powerful voice, but she doesn't have a high register. She has more of a husky register. Yeah, very low. Unique in pop music, particularly for ladies. Very much like in the vein of like a Joan Jett, except that I would say that uh, Miley's voice is rounder. There's just more there. Uh, love Joan Jett. That not a knock. I'm just saying it's an incredible instrument. Yeah. Yeah, I think she has the uh, the Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hours thing where she was been singing since she was a little kid. Yeah. Probably with a ton of instruction. Yeah. Of various kinds. And uh, just knows how it works. Yeah. And use what she has and not try to be like someone else. Yeah. She's deep inside her own experience. And uh, wonderful ability to do covers. Yeah. I think about the best in the business. Because doing covers, I think, is tough. To do it in any way that feels meaningful or, you know, or even useful. Yeah. Because... Or even yeah, different enough to be worth doing. Yeah, and to have the um, cojones to do Jolene, mm -hmm. Godmother's song, and to do the hell out of it. Great. My only complaint, but this was true of Dolly Parton too. When I listen to that song, I would watch. I, I go, I know you're doing a character, but there's no dude choosing any lady over you. That's not happening. But but that's not your fault. There's but there's no one who's hooking up with Miley Cyrus going, yeah, but I can do better. You're not doing it. That's not happening. Yeah. Although it probably does happen. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. Certainly it happened to Dolly Parton. Mm. That was based on a based on a true story. Oh my God. Who's that moron? <laughs> well, I guess you know what? It happened to Gwen Stefani and her band, and that guy later talked about feeling like an idiot and i'm like okay well i guess yeah yeah i mean we are idiots that's true we are <laughs> large idiots a lot of people will mostly women but also some men will happily tell you yeah that men are idiots so i will say listen i've always said i like miley cyrus because she's so talented and then my wife said eh, you like miley cyrus because she seems like attainable white trash <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Well, yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm bothered by your rightness, dear. <laughs> um, attainable is never a word I would use. I no, no, I think <laughs> she's saying in my imagination, I think, where that occupies that spot. Right. Because Miley <laughs> Cyrus in my imagination is five foot four. <laughs> <laughs> and if you meet her in real life you're like what are you six nine or whatever she is i don't think she's six nine but she's a tall drink of water I'm a giant yeah 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 but like people on tv you're like oh and if you met miley cyrus i would go oh right right oh also i'm really old okay never mind, right. <laughs> right. Never mind. She, she, nothing would delight her less than the two of us talking about her yeah oh yeah um hey you want to do you like early dinners? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she probably does, because then there's more time for the club. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, Your first half of the evening date. Yeah, <laughs> and then before things get good and I go to bed. Uh, yeah. Um, I, the other thing, though, I said this last time, I feel like she drives the bus, and I like that. I do really right. like that. Agree? Yeah, I, do. I agree that you like that. And do you agree that she does that? Oh, for sure. Okay, yeah, cool. no, that's what I was saying. Like attainable doesn't come to mind. I feel like she's scary. Yeah, yeah. I here's what you know about me, though. The more I think somebody would be bothered by my nattering, I'd go, "Oh man, I'm gonna have a conversation." <laughs> oh yeah, she would. Forky would make an appearance. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I really like your covers. I feel so talented. Yeah. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she records a song called F.U. Forky, and I'm like, oh, man, 
Oh man, I'm famous. <laughs> uh, the other thing she does a lot in her music is she sure does sing a lot about getting high. That's pretty funny. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's just um, a lot. I will say I don't know a lot of her music. I did watch her New Year's Eve special. It was great. Because, of course, we went to dinner at 530 and came home. And then we're like, oh, well, I guess we'll watch the special. When does it start? Three hours from now. All right. <laughs> uh, and it was great. It was, you know, her making Paris Hilton sing and then visibly cracking up at how bad her singing was. Yes, absolutely. She did a Christmas yeah. special that was great, too. Yeah. Yeah. And she's the, like Lady Gaga. I like that she's very good for the, uh, you know, the gay community. She's very a good yep. advocate for justice of all kinds, which is nice. Yeah. And strong lady and uh, lots of messaging about how uh, women get to be strong. Yeah. And uh, I, she does seem like um, she is not worried about what anyone thinks. Yep, in a true it sense. Yeah. Not be actually true, but it's she's very very good at conveying that. Yeah, that New Year's Eve special was a fucking mess. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, it's New Year's Eve. Yeah, I like that. I like. Yeah, she's not a perfectionist, which is kind of nice because there's. There's something to be said for raw art. Now, obviously, you don't want it to be garbage, but but also somebody being overcommitted to perfection, and you end up perfecting your way out of art. So. We um, on our show when we have musicians on, they will do their little song in front of the audience, and then we will give them the option to do it again if they're not happy with how it went. And mo almost everyone says no to that. They're like, oh, no, fine. It was fine, you know. Uh, and we are getting very good backstage at predicting who will say yes. Yeah. We want to do it again. <laughs> and it's always the people who treated everybody the worst all day long. <laughs> they're assholes. And then they're like, it comes out of, I guess, out of insecurity. Yeah. It's, uh, the moral of that story, I guess. But you, you just know when they're like, uh, or can we get more seltzers in here? Uh, where's the bathroom? Eh. They're just bothering people, and like, they're like hangers on. We'll try to get our hairstylists to work on them. Uh, you're not in the band. You're not so, that kind of people, and like always, the the vibe is always spread evenly throughout the whole posse. <laughs> Whenever we have music on, it's like they come with 15 or 20 people every time. Yeah. No matter who it is. I think that's probably a record company thing. There's always record company Jags who are there. Um, and it's the worst. I'm so happy when there's not a musical guest. And it's just like some fucking comedian in corduroys. And you're like, great. Come <laughs> one other person. <laughs> uh, usually somebody we know. I'm like, oh, great. Hi, Pam. <laughs> so much better. That's really cool. Yeah. What was, uh, I, I, I won't have you tell a bad story, but favorite musical guest that you've gotten to see on Seth's show? Oh, gosh. That's a good question. We've had quite a few. You know, who I really liked is we were the first show to have Iggy Azalea on. Oh. But it was great. And we're like, this lady, she was really nice <laughs> and very cool. And we're like, this song is kind of a bop. And then like, <laughs> for the ensuing years, we're like, oh, no, she has turned into a joke. Yeah. Um, but really cool when she was there. And I think she was so happy to finally be on TV. We, we have a lot of people doing their very first appearance <laughs> for sure. I don't understand how she turned into a joke. I understand... How she turned into, we don't have to take you too serious. I think it was a lot of like, oh, look at this. A white lady is rapping. Sure. And we don't care for that. And you're in the rapping community. Right. So appropriation. Appropriation. I don't know if she was good at it or not. I, I'm not clearly the person to ask about good rap. But aren't you? Because I, to me, I'm like, 
did you like it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there is a yeah. There's the question of whether or not you like something, and then the question of whether or not it's good. Yeah. Somehow so, those became separate things. So I have off and on in my professional life as a person trying to make a living, uh, operated as a stand-in sommelier. Oh. Uh, because I do know quite a bit about wine. But yeah. I'm not really sommelier. I didn't go to classes, and I didn't do extensive amount of research. I just did enough to pass yeah and i came up with this thing that i like to say to people on how you can tell if a wine is good and i'll tell you how you can tell if a wine is good did you like it right that's pretty good wine yeah you know, we, i feel like the best wine i ever had was uh in chicago when you go to greek town yeah um there's like five or six restaurants and inevitably you have to wait in some kind of weird line or there's a little waiting area and they'll come around and they'll pour you glasses of this stuff called Roditas. Okay. It's very light. It's almost fruit punch. And it's, it's so tasty. I'm like, this yeah. is my favorite wine. And I know it's fucking garbage wine that costs $4 a bottle. And I don't care. Yeah. It's lovely. And then the other one is the Portuguese green wine. Oh, uh, yes. Alvareño. Like you can't, we, Sue always says you can't spend $20 on a bottle because it's just dirt cheap. But it's yeah. so good. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, those are the best wines. Yep, absolutely. Okay. And I will tell you what, I've had somebody, and then we'll get back on topic because we're supposed to stay on topic. Supposed to stay. Uh, we're very close. Uh, I've had wines that were 100 bucks, 120 bucks. I've had a $500 wine. Yeah. And sometimes what happens is this is this nice old wine that turned. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then so long $100 and I, you're not going to finish it. I <laughs> I had a bottle of Dom Perignon that I saved and saved and brought to a New Year's party and was very proud of myself and poured it for everybody. And I was like, oh, this went bad. Yep. And I, for a while, I thought like, oh, maybe I'm just not good at drinking expensive champagne. And I was like, I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to taste bad. Yeah. <laughs> Very, you know, worst case scenario, you can't tell the difference. Yeah. So, well, the yeah. funny thing, too, is you're a reasonably sophisticated fella, but you're not Mr. Fancy. And I guarantee at some point, the temperature of wherever you kept that bottle went up and down and up and down. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I've moved twice while I had it, probably. And it was in a cardboard box. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've had wines like that, too, and realized oh, I'm not qualified. Yeah. Like wine. I'm just not qualified to do it. Yep. That's why I'm I'm not... like bourbon, because you can't mess that up. Yeah, I'm not qualified to collect comics. I realized a while ago, I'm like, I'm going to collect, I don't collect stuff because I am not responsible enough to own a thing now and have it be just as good later. Right. I'm going to bend anything you give me. That's right. Um, so let's talk about flowers. Uh, That's right. It is, I think, a very pretty song. And I'll tell you one thing I also like about the very beginning. Let's talk about the music. I like this about Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus can do a pop song and still her country bleeds through. She is country in every MF and thing. She, I don't care. If she's <laughs> talking about doing Molly, she's a country girl talking about doing Molly. Yes. That twang is not artificial. That way of speaking is who she is and it just comes through and i like that yeah it definitely you can you know if you're listening to her versus a Katy perry or something yeah like, yep there it is um which is great yep. it's, and it's uh speaks to a truth about people in that industry it's like they don't they weren't all born in la in a lab Yep. Well, and I'll use Taylor Swift as an example. Another person I respect and like, but if Taylor Swift does a pop song, she shaves, uh, she saves away the country for the pop song. She just mm -hmm. does that. She sings just 
a very nice song, but she sings it in a very kind of milk toast kind of just way. Again, <laughs> I like her. I think she's a very yeah. good writer, but just musically, she doesn't always move me. I just have a great deal of respect for her. Right. But whereas with Miley, you know, though, this is a country girl. Yep. This is a girl who had a fist fight or two in her day, who <laughs> was has been willing to stand up for herself and has this is a girl who I think could fix a truck. Yeah, has terrible tattoos. Yes. Which, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. And she's just like, okay, I'm gonna sing your pop song, but it's gonna sound like me. Yeah. Okay. And that's what it should be. It should sound lovely like it should sound like whoever the hell you are and and by the way i'm looking at a picture of her and you're not wrong she's got some dumb tattoos yeah great uh, yeah so all right so i'll start out uh we were good we were gold kind of dream that can't be sold and by the way sold listen to that that's the way a country girl says sold <laughs> sold we were right till we weren't. I really like that lyric. Built a home and watched it burn, which is what made me look that up. Based on a true story. Yeah, we were good. We were a gold kind of dream that can't be sold. We were right till we weren't. Built a <laughs> home and watched it burn. I like that lyric a lot. I really do. Um, I like that it's right Maybe. away about something beautiful that was clearly tainted and yep. broken from kind of broken out of the box as they say when you get a little a new toy as a kid and you're like uh oh yeah mom got me something broken <laughs> yep um i like that it tells a very full story in four lines yeah it's very economical and kind of signals to you that like this is not what the song's about. <laughs> However, you need to know this. Yeah. This is the the setup. Don't get attached to this story. Yeah, this is the uh, part about the uh, friend he used to be real close to. It's just real quick. This is the story. Got to, you know. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. This is uh, just know this part to get into the important part. Yeah. That's uh, very smart. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, it's like when you're telling a story about some friend of yours, and you're like, all right, first you have to know that this guy is like 300 pounds, and uh, he can't read. Now, let me tell you the story. <laughs> okay, that's all I need. No extra details, just the ones you need right. to process the anecdote. <laughs> Someday I should learn to tell a story that way. <laughs> <laughs> Any story about me, just know Jim talks too much. It's the opposite of this podcast. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, all right. It's uh it's you now. Uh mm, I didn't want to leave you. I didn't want to lie. Started to cry, but then I remembered I it's a nice little place for a weird rhyme. Yeah. Uh, I like that. I didn't want to leave you. I didn't want to lie. Yeah. Well, since I couldn't lie, I did have to leave you. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And that's pretty great. A pretty well, man, that's it feels like if it feels very confessional in a way, too, which is clearly I had a problem. Mm -hmm. Whatever it was, and if the problem was I couldn't be me with you, or the problem was I did a bad thing, I don't know. Right. Either one, but regardless, it huh? And it doesn't matter. Yeah, when it was because that's not part. <laughs> you don't need that part. Yeah, understand but, the rest of the story. But the bottom line here is, I really would have liked to stay with you. Yeah, I like that sentiment. And also, it like that uh, it's a breakup story uh in a pop song where the woman initiated the breakup yeah and it's which is less common i think probably more common than it used to be sure but less i think and then also 
what was my point? He, uh, unique uh, that it's a uh, brain fog. Yeah. Uh, you were starting to talk about how unique it is that it's a woman initiating the breakup in a song. Initiating the breakup. The, you know, if it wasn't, the rest of the song would sound like a revenge plot. Um, and it doesn't. It comes off differently. Yes. Because it's not like, oh, I'm going to do all these things to get back at you. It's just like, oh, I'm just going to take care of myself. Yes. Oh, my God. That's a great observation. You're right. Because you're right. You set it up this way. It's positive. You do it the old country way. Then you're, you know, then you're right. putting keys in his car, in his, you know, your key in his car, like in that other song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's great. Um, do you want to do the the chorus first? Okay, I can buy myself flowers, write my name in the sand, talk to myself for hours, say things you don't understand. I can take myself dancing, and I can hold my own hand. Yeah, I can love me better than you can. Now I want to. I'm going to share an observation a friend of mine made about this song, mm -hmm. which is he said I like the song fine except I don't like the hold my own hand because uh, you can't. That's terrible. Try it. It doesn't. There's not remotely. Okay. <laughs> you physically you can. Yeah, <laughs> it's a different vibe. But it's not comforting, and it's very funny because this friend of mine is a a hardcore literalist just the way he hears things he can't uh -huh. help but do things literally and he's like yeah you can buy yourself flowers but it's not as nice as when somebody buys them for you, <laughs> you <know? laughs> okay. like yeah that's, that's not really what the song is about but <laughs> exactly the point <laughs> uh, uh, just I think I... the point is like it, I mean, that sort of goes hand in hand with what she's saying, I think. It's like, I can do all that shit I can do. Yep. Shit you did for me. The thing I needed from you, you weren't giving me. Yeah. See, that's what, what he was missing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's like all of this stuff. Sure. You did a lot of performative romance. Yeah. I didn't need you to buy me flowers. I needed you to love me properly. Yeah. Yeah. Let me be myself. And I'm in, I'm assuming that because that is the theme of most of Miley's songs is just let me be myself. So I bet you that's what it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, and all those big, and it really does speak to, if you're in a relationship, all the big things you do come down to being nothing if you can't do the important day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah. I said yeah. this before. There was a girl that I wrote poetry for, and she loved the poetry until she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, the joke I used to say was, you know what women like is like when you write them a poem. You know what women don't like when you write them 17 poems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's the same thing. Like, it's nice if you write the poem. But here's what's also nice. See me as an individual. Yeah listen to my problem and don't tell me how to fix it yeah um etc whatever else people do when they love somebody yeah uh, i <laughs> imagine yeah <laughs> um great oh there's sort of another little can love me better i can love me better baby can love me better i can love me better baby i mean that's the point right there she's like look I can love myself better than you. Also, I like that it's better than you can. Yeah. Not than you did. It's like, oh, no, you literally weren't capable of this stuff. You, you know what? You're right. It doesn't necessarily even assign blame as much as it's acknowledging a reality. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of it's strangely positive in a wonderful way for a breakup song. Yeah. It's very aware. Yeah. It's very modern. It's definitely a very modern woman taking charge of her own happiness. Yep. It's not, you did me wrong. It's like, you just didn't know how to do it right. Yeah. And maybe I don't need you to. Maybe I can be 
me with me. Yeah. I like this next lyric, and I will say partly, I really like the way she sings this. Because <laughs> it's that her little guttural thing, that low husky thing. This lyric is just perfect for her voice. Paint my nails cherry red. Listen to the song and the way she says cherry red. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Mask the roses that you left. Like that a lot. Pay mm -hmm. my nails cherry red. Match the roses that you left. No remorse, no regret. I forgive every word you said. Yep. Clean slate. Releasing you. It's funny how there really isn't anything... You would have to assume negative things about whoever she's talking about. Well, you know who she's talking about. But uh, but you would have to assume the negative because it's not in the lyrics. Yeah. She's not. It isn't. It doesn't feel like airing dirty laundry. It doesn't feel like that, which is fine, too, when people do that. But this ain't that. I release you. Yeah. That's I it. I release you. And isn't it true? Probably more. I release me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I like that. I just really like that lyric. And we must confess, as we close in on the end, there aren't a lot of lyrics to this song. <laughs> <laughs> really oh, I didn't want to leave you, baby. I didn't want to fight. Oh, I like that. Right. Did I jump on yours? I'm sorry. Was that supposed no, to be? No, no, no. Please, go. Started to cry, but then remembered, I can buy myself flowers again. <laughs> <laughs> my name in the sand again talk to myself for hours well then maybe you're crazy just by that yeah. talk to myself for hours say things you don't understand well yeah that's true of anybody we see talking to themselves <laughs> <laughs> i can take myself dancing now that is a hardcore truth about anybody particularly women who like to go dancing who realize oh i could just go out yeah Go get dancing with my girlfriends and not be bothered. I can hold my own hand. Yeah, I can love you better than you can. I don't think there's much more lyrics here, are there? It's a lot of repetition. Yeah. It's a it is a good little bop, right? Yeah. That's how you described it, and I think that's quite true. Um is there yeah. any other lyrics in here that are unique, or is it all just now? It's just all it repetition. It's so funny because I was looking at some other Miley Cyrus songs, and there's some that have a shit ton of lyrics. This takes like <laughs> one of them. Yeah, this is just like think you know, made her point real quick. And it's a <laughs> it's a freedom yeah. anthem, right? It's a freedom anthem. It's a yeah, it's an empowerment. Yeah. You know, Anthem. I think it's also a nice little ode to uh, the conscious uncoupling. <laughs> this yeah, just yeah. isn't it. Yep. You... Yeah, and the video is fantastic, of course. Yeah. Um, musically, by the way, note that it has what I like, is it has an ending. Yeah, that's always lovely. It finishes proper. It doesn't do a dumb fade out. <laughs> it has a nice finish to it. Uh, it's do definitely have, modern. Do you, have this, do you have this album? I don't. Uh, I'm wondering do what the rest of it is like. I don't have it. So I'm such a get my music other ways. And uh -huh. and I may get it. I may actually get it on vinyl if it's available because I have a proper um, record player now. Fantastic. And I, I do enjoy the records. The problem with records and why they're still, they're never going to completely come back is you can love the sound of a record, but what you love better is not needing as much furniture to keep your crap in. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's true. Unless you're lucky enough to have lots of leftover space. Yeah. So I, even in this lovely apartment in New York, I don't have a place to put a record player. I and, to get that fine. and if you like records, once you've bought 10 records, just 10, you're like, Jesus, this takes a lot of space. Yeah. And they're very easy to damage. 
Yeah. Um, and it, lo it looks cool, I guess. The sound is different, and I never believed that because I always felt that that was a hipster bit of nonsense. Right. Having not heard a record in a long time, when I put it on, now, granted, I was listening to Beatles on vinyl. Yeah. So I'm listening to some of the best musicians and best songwriting ever. So I don't, I doubt it's true for everybody. I don't need necessarily think you need to listen to, say, Iggy Azalea on vinyl. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> but, yeah. Well, listening to it and being surrounded by it and realizing that your oh, Prince is a good example too. Hearing it the way the artist intended you to hear it is pretty nice. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but, even when I had a record player, I had like 20 records and I was like, these are the ones I like. Yeah. So here on vinyl and the rest, most of the rest of it don't care. Yeah, absolutely. And there's something about who, when the artist recorded it. Yeah. Like, were they thinking uh, this is going to be on a record player, so certain choices are going to get made that don't get made if you assume everyone's going to listen to it on AirPods? True. Very, very true. Yeah, because with the... Sure there are. I couldn't tell you what they were. No, no, you're absolutely right. With the Beatles specifically, I can tell you that there was a decision to say, this comes out of this channel, this comes out of this channel, so that it, it creates an atmosphere around your head right. that you lose when it's compressed. And, For sure. and that's absolutely true of Prince too, where he wants you to hear the hi-hat over here or whatever he's right. doing. Um, yeah. And you, for sure, a lot of modern artists aren't doing that for sure. Yeah. Or they're doing some other version that yeah. applies, applies to digital recording. Yeah. Cause I'm sure if, if we were still, if vinyl was still the way, Bruno Mars would be recording thinking about it. But now he thinks about the delivery system that's current. Like this is going to be coming out of Alex's Alexa. Yeah. Like once every three months. <laughs> <laughs> this is he tries to get excited about going to work. What is the best way to enjoy this occasionally? <laughs> In infrequently. Um, here's what I'll say about this song. I okay. think it is elevated by the fact that it could have easily been like a fuck you song with just a few little changes. And I think it would have been less good and less interesting and less useful. Yes. It would have been much more forgettable if it was just like, fuck you, I don't need you. Agreed. That's what uh, I've always so um you've heard that song. <laughs> yep. So I I've said this once before, but I'll say it again and then I'll draw the analogy. Um, she loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Beatles song. Uh-huh. What I had this epiphany about the song that I I was like, that's why this song is so brilliant. And it was that the per people singing to you. None of the people singing to you are in the relationship. <laughs> and that's unique. Yeah. Talking about two mutual friends. She loves you. He's given his buddy advice. And you don't hear that in other songs. No, unless they're Billy Joel songs, because he will give fuckers advice. Yes. That was, all the time. Yeah, that's right. But also, <laughs> this is friendly advice, which you'll never hear in a Billy Joel. Yeah, that's true. You'll never hear it. It's not condescending advice. Yeah. So that's beautifully unique. And in a simple song, likewise, in the Smiley Cyrus song, it is uniquely not negative. Yeah. It's uniquely yeah. empowering without being, there's some negativity because breakups are innately sad things. Yep, but they're, it's almost not the point. Yeah. The point is, I'm good, I'm and good. we just weren't. I can do all the things you did that I didn't really need. Yeah. And uh, not sweating, worrying, like finding someone else who can do those things. Yeah. That's not going to be a problem. No, no, I'm around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. Peace of mind, too, is the other thing. Is To me, the one of the theme, themes of the damn song is peace of mind. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, the I could write my name in the sand. I like that lyric a lot, too. 
because I, I can celebrate me. Right. I can I can I can understand what's good about me. I don't need you to tell me with flowers and with you know big gestures. Yeah. And so yeah, I like it. It is a, a piffle of a song. I don't know if years from now we'll remember it. Might we might. Yeah, I don't know. But don't know. Uh, but man, she's got a body at work, so there's gonna be she's what she's an artist I think will get out of her decade. You know, you know, there's artists who don't, oh, yeah. you know, well, isn't she already. I mean, this is her second decade. True. Very true. Or, Third, uh, if you count uh, Hannah Montana, too. Yeah, I don't. Others will. Yeah. Why? What, what a weird what a weird thing to escape in one piece. She is only 30. Wow. I don't know why I thought she was older than that. You do know why, because she's been famous so damn long. That, hearing that name forever, yeah. Yeah, because she was put to work as a child. Seems like she had a reasonable amount of good people around her to escape the Disney machine without being totally brutalized. Seems that way. Yeah. I think she she probably has some negative things to say about it. Did you know? I'm just Googling. Do you know her real name? Oh, um... I never knew this. I know her nickname is Smiley. <laughs> um, uh, it's kind of a trivia question. Hannah Gadsby. <laughs> yes. Yeah, her name's Hannah Gadsby. Destiny Hope. Destiny Hope Cyrus. So you got to change it to something more stage like. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Destiny Hope. Boy, that is some white trash. Wow, Destiny Hope. My God. Now, listen, I got a surprise for you. Oh, is she with you? Oh. Yeah. So I got a clue. It's to uh -huh. a different Miley Cyrus song. <laughs> that doesn't do me any good. Yeah, this I is about... So little about Miley Cyrus. Uh, uh, the, the hint is this is the easiest one to get. Okay. Uh, is it uh, LAX? That's right. Uh, is that the name of the song? Airport. No. Huh? Airport. Um, no, uh, but when she arrives, the fun begins. <laughs> What's another name for fun? Joy. Right. Where do we have fun? in the usa is it a party in the usa the party in the usa <laughs> hopped off the plane at lax with a dream ah. start again welcome to the land of famous people something something I don't know. it's a great little tune <laughs> my friend i have a friend who likes to make fun of that song just one lyric um uh everybody's looking at me now like who is that chick who's rocking kicks because that's the lyric is who's that kid kid who's rocking kicks and my friend goes apparently everybody looked at her and goes what's that chick doing wearing shoes <laughs> well maybe in her hometown right well, well true <laughs> she clarifies late later that uh everybody's got stilettos i guess i never got the memo <laughs> i uh thought it was going to be a Billy Joel clue and I had my answer all loaded up. Oh, what was it? Uh, flying east on a plane. Yeah, could be. No, no we, I mileed it up. Dang. So you got your Miley trivia for me? No, that's fine. If you got Billy Joel trivia, I'll take it. Well, I'll give you this. In 2017 at Madison Square Garden, Billy Joel and Miley Cyrus duetted on a song. Ooh. What song? Still rock and roll to me. Nope. Ah, uh, we didn't start the fire. <laughs> no, although great. Yeah. Um, New York State of Mind. New York State of Mind. Correct. <laughs> Nicely done. I bet she was great too. There's video. You should check it out. It's pretty I, great. No, damn right I will. Have you saw on the SNL anniversary when she did Fifty Ways to Leave Your Lover? 
must have seen it. So good. Wait, was that the fortieth? I think so. Um, yes, because I was there. Oh, she was so good. It was such a good version. It's it's one of those versions that bums you out. That <laughs> why did they not? Why is this not a single somewhere where I can just have it? Yeah. But it's because, well, that's because it was for the show. It was just this live thing that they did. Interesting. That same night at Madison Square Garden, uh, Paul Simon also was there. I, yes, he. Uh, I don't know what they did. I'm sure. So. Yeah, it was it was a really good version and it was good and countrified. And it was just this what I like about her. She's one of those ones, by the way, that won me over. Not that that was her goal. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be thrilled. Yeah, but then in the very beginning, because a lot of times with music, um, it takes me a while to like anything new, first of all. Yeah. And then also sometimes it's not that I dislike it. It's that I think the same for me because I know it wasn't made for me. Right. And then eventually I make peace with that. I'm like, well, it's okay if it wasn't made for me. I think I'm allowed to like it. I think that's okay. I think if you like the Beatles, that shit wasn't made for you. Oh, that's true. Or making songs for three-year-olds. Well, that's <laughs> not true either. They did make some of those. Yeah, they definitely made some of those. <laughs> yeah, very true. But yeah, so with modern artists, sometimes I'm like, well... I'm not sure if it's good or bad, but I am sure it doesn't matter what I think because this is for kids right now experiencing the unpleasantness of youth. So yeah. leave them alone. It'd be a, a very good uh, master's thesis for somebody to do uh, what sort of messaging 18-year-olds were getting at various stages. Oh, yeah. The century. Yeah, very true. Very true. Like the, whatever the era was where we were singing songs about people cutting off mice's tails. Like, why, did, why was that the jam? Why, why, was the, why did young girls need to be empowered in that particular way? <laughs> yeah. I was watching an old Warner Brothers cartoon and it was... Actually, I don't think it was Warner Brothers. It was a, the cat and the mouse one. Uh, Tom and Jerry. <laughs> Tom cat. gets... Yeah, Tom. Uh -huh. and Tom Still goes to, almost goes to heaven. He ends up going to hell in this one. Which is oh, weird. Right. But I saw something that I found jarring because a sack comes up to heaven, and they uh -huh. open the sack, and the kittens jump out, and it's cute. And then I was like, "Hey, wait a minute!" So it's <laughs> somebody drowned those cats. Yeah, and that was the. The joke in the cartoon was it the joke or was the guy who animated just wanted people at home to go? You guys know your dicks. Well, yeah. why, did, why did you do that? <laughs> That's really great. Isn't that weird? It's great and horrifying. Cartoons used to be better in that regard. <laughs> I feel like animators have always been uh, evil. <laughs> I think a lot of bad people. I think. <laughs> yeah, I think that's absolutely true. Um, you know, the Zodiac Killer was an animator. Oh no, shit. <laughs> he worked on uh, uh, what's his name, Snaggletooth. That's right. <laughs> well, that's right. Uh, by the way, I had there. I had a rant. This is a quick rant that I had earlier this week. An argument with somebody was oh. uh, <laughs> the Family Guy animated a thing where uh, Peter Griffin does exactly what Jerry Lewis did in the Errand Boy with this mime where he's smoking a cigar and uh -huh. somebody said, isn't that so funny? And I'm like, no, it isn't. The errand boy is funny. Yeah. Did not add anything to the comedy. That's not a reference. Yeah. Reference isn't just saying the thing again. Oh, girl, I have to tell my writers that. Well, I, I don't tell them. I yell in my office to myself. That's not a reference if you're just doing the thing. Yeah. You can't just mention a thing and get credit. Yeah, that's stealing, as I think what that's called. Contextualize it somehow. Yeah. 
You're just saying a thing that people know. Yeah. There's no points. Zero points. Yeah. There's a damn family guy where Stewie dances with uh Fred Astaire. Is it Fred Astaire? No, Gene Kelly. Gene Kelly. Huh? Um, just like Jerry did in the Tom and Jerry cartoon. How's that different? <laughs> Yeah, oh, we should have a whole other podcast where I complain about Family Guy. Yeah. <laughs> so I got a lot of shit to say. And uh, I worked for that guy, and he was very nice and very generous. Yeah. A show. I struggle. I struggle. Yeah. <laughs> it impacts me every day. American Dad. Question. How do we determine who picks next week's song? Well, I did pick Miley. Yes, you did, but it's it's a bottle episode, so does it count? <laughs> um, I say it does, and then the next time we have a bottle episode, you oh. let me know, and you'll pick the bottle episode the next time we do one. That makes sense. So you'll pick the next one, and then you'll also pick the next bottle episode, which means that I'll subsequently pick the song after that. I like it. Okay, so what are we doing next week? Well, I'm Googling. <laughs> <laughs> now we're it's getting very hard to remember what we've done. Yeah. Have we done The Entertainer? Yes. We must have, right? We have. Did we do The Great Suburban Showdown? No, we did not. That's the one. No, we did not. That'll That's be awesome. what I thought your clue was. Let's do that one. <laughs> <laughs> a great suburban showdown that's a good one all right nice job and then uh yeah and then when it's my turn next week i'll pick a billy joel song this was a nice little um off ramp i was debating this is the eternal debate about how how shows are done i was <laughs> like do and should i consider it within the number of our shows or is it but and so i've decided i'm just going to put it in the number of our shows yeah. but you could also do a thing where it's not that numbered that way it's it's you keep it separate as its own thing like a special event or whatever but then i'd have to keep track of it <laughs> yeah so i'm not going to do that don't do it that way this is still Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. That was just a bottle episode. And I think I can justify it. Well, I can justify anything as, as my wife will attest. Um, but I think just the fact that they, they have sung together. They have sung together. And here's what I'll say on this episode, this episode, we analyzed Billy Joel lyrics uh, only a little less than we normally do. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that is right. <laughs> oh, damn.